Serverless is just great. However, sometimes rapid development, iteration, debugging, all of those things can be tricky. Anytime you make a change, anytime you update something, you have to publish it to the cloud. And well, that sometimes can take some time. What if, what if there was a way that you can run your serverless application locally on your laptop? Hmm. But wait, so you mean like running Lambda functions, DynamoDB table, event buses locally? Yeah. Well, local stack is that here for you. Local stack? Well, local stack is your cloud services resources emulator. Uh, through the magic of some Docker containers, it's able to basically simulate or emulate certain AWS resources from Lambda functions to S3 buckets to API gateways to Kinesis streams to event bridges and buses and all kinds of things. Um, more information in their docs. You can use that for local development. But Darko, isn't isn't local stack something old? Haven't we talked about local stack in the past? Yes, absolutely. Local stack is nothing new. It is amazing. It's been here for a while. What is new? It's the latest AWS toolkit for VS Code integration with local stack. I'm going to show you how that works. The AWS toolkit for VS Code is an open source plugin that helps you, the developers, uh, build things on AWS a little bit easier. What it does, it actually integrates it with a, bunch of, with a bunch of AWS services, so it provides you a lot of features like, I don't know, like a resource explorer, like CDK stack management, and application builder. But what it does in here, in this case, is you can actually go ahead and set up a local stack, and it will work with local stack. So in the application builder, you can help click application builder walkthrough, and it's going to take you through this whole thing from installing all the necessary things, such as the AWS CLI, the SAM CLI, Docker, you will likely need Docker locally, and of course, local stack. Once this is all done and set up, it's going to basically enable this thing so you can have local stack running, but also it will create an additional AWS profile to be used with local stack resources. This is the critical thing. When you deploy resources in local stack, you're going to be using this specific local stack profile because of the endpoint URLs for the CLI and command line. It's, it's all there, but it's all set up for you. So let's go ahead and build an application, a serverless application locally with this thing. Let's test it. Let's deploy it. Let's see how it does. Let me show you how you can deploy a sample application using the AWS toolkit and local stack so we can build and test it locally. So what I'm going to do here is open up the AWS toolkit, click on these three little three uh, buttons and click application builder walkthrough. This is going to take me to this exact same page here. However, I'm going to go ahead here, click choose application template. This is going to basically help me initialize a simple project for my, um, for my serverless application. I'm going to hit .NET, uh, let's do the, let's do Node.js, why not? Um, and I'm going to just select the current workspace, uh, work, workspace, current folder here. Clicking on that one, you will see there's uh, going to be a bunch of stuff generated here. There's a hello, hello world thing. But if I open up here, see, we have a template.yaml. What this thing does, it actually uses SAM, the serverless application model, to deploy these resources. And if you look at this thing, it actually has a function and, and an API gateway. If you look at the infra infrastructure composer, which is also part of the toolkit, you will see that there's an API gateway here and there's a Lambda function. So, you know what, let's go ahead and add something to it. I'm going to drag and drop a DynamoDB table here and just going to connect the DynamoDB table to this Lambda function. And I'm just going to keep everything here as default. It's fine. An ID. You can make some changes there. But what's important about this whole thing is if you go into template, you will see all of a sudden there's a table. Hmm. And that table has given permission to my Lambda function, which is amazing. It has also passed some environment variables. So, just like that, this thing is now configured to basically deploy a serverless application to the cloud. However, we're going to look at local stack. So with local stack running here, as you can see in the bottom, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this profile and just make sure I select the profile local stack. This is basically a way for it to point my CLI, even SAM CLI, towards this specific location. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to change anything in my Lambda function just yet. And I'm going to open up myself a terminal here. So clear that, and I'm going to run SAM deploy dash dash guided. I want it to ask me questions and profile local stack. So what this is going to do, is it's going to make sure that it uses the local stack profile. So hit that, and it's going to ask me typical applications, we have a local stack app. 
uh, US West 2, sure. Uh, Locals actually emulates regions as well, so this is kind of critical. US West 2 is fine. Uh, confirm changes, uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, create rollback, the sale rollback. Uh, there's no authentication there, is that okay? That's perfectly fine. Save arguments to a file, yes. SAML config.toml, default, boom. Okay, it is creating resources as we speak, which is incredible. Uh, and I'm going to show you these resources right now. As soon as they're created, I'm going to show them to you um, out there in local stack. So in local stack in your dashboard, once you're logged in, you will basically be able to see your specific stack, localhost.localstack.cloud. By the way, that URL is something you need to take, uh, take into account because that URL is going to be used for testing. But if you go to resource browser, and I'm going to go ahead and look at Lambda functions, there is a Lambda function here. Look at that. It's a Node.js 20 Lambda function. It is there. It was just created. It's in the cloud. It's not the cloud. This is all running locally. This is all running in the Docker container. Um, and basically, this is now ready. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and you see this URL here? This may look slightly different for you. For me, currently, it looks this way. So I'm going to do curl uh, HTTPS and do a bunch of changes to this URL here because I want to show you that you can actually execute this. So curl, uh, let's do paste this thing here and then do... I just want to change this from Amazon um, uh, Amazon database .api .com. I'm going to say local uh, local host .local stack .cloud. That should be my thing, right? Local host .local stack .cloud. Yeah. So if I come here and I say ship it, I should get a message, hello world. It has actually executed this Lambda function locally which is just wonderful. So let's go ahead and make some changes to this Lambda function. I'm going to show you how fast the deployment deploy, deployments work. So opening up my Lambda function here, it's a simple just JavaScript application here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to drop in some code that is going to just write stuff to the DynamoDB table. So uh, please stand by. Okay, so I've dropped in some code here basically that sets up a DynamoDB uh, client and writes a simple, sim simple row call uh, of ID, hello and name is a world. Uh, that's not a problem. H however, I do need to go into my uh, Hello World application and I need to npm add, npm add at AWS SDK DynamoDB. So I need to add this specific thing to the to the package.json. Um, what you will see happening right now, if I clear this and do SAM deploy, I don't need to do any guidance here because it has all those things uh, set up save here. If I do it in the correct directory, SAM deploy. Um, this thing will now deploy the specific template locally again. Remember, everything here is running locally because that's how we set it up. Um, perfect. Okay, so that's good. Now, if I curl my uh, curl my, um, my 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 lambda function, my API gateway, and hit enter, I should get something. An internal server error. That's not great. So let's actually see what's wrong here. Um, I'm going to actually show you how you can test this with, with this, uh, with the toolkit. So in the, in the Explorer here on the left hand side, you will see a bunch of regions and I'm going to select Oregon. Weirdly enough, you can see here connected with profile localhost. It shows you AWS resources. However, these resources are running on local stack. So if I go here and find my Lambda function in US West 2, look at that, hit this little play button. And uh, I'm just going to close this so we can see it better. Um, we can remote invoke this Lambda function. I'm just going to remote invoke. And the great thing about this thing is you're going to actually see the, the, the log that's going on here. Error message, cannot set properties undefined, setting translate, cannot set property translate config. Um, DynamoDB client is a problem. Let's see what the issue here is. Um, <laughs> Okay, I found the issue. Two issues, actually. Uh, table table name was the problem. Remember, the table, the process environment variable wasn't table underscore name, but actually it was table table name. I, this is a Sam thing, sure. Um, and um, my, my actually handler name was wrong. I just called it handler, but it actually, according to the template, it needs to be Lambda handler. So I did a deploy. I made the changes. Basically, I made the changes that uh, just this. So let me show you. Um, Control Z and just Sam deploy. Simple as that, really quick, 
it just takes a couple of seconds. It's almost as fast as running locally. Not really, but almost. So, well, it is running locally. Weird. Yes. And then I go ahead and open up my, uh, my AWS thing here. Run. Let me just clean up my screen a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, hit remote invoke, which is also weird. It's not remote, it's local, local, but you will see here that it successfully ran. Uh, there's a status code of 200. And if I go, uh, go into my local stack and go into my resource browser and look for DynamoDB, you will see that there is a table called local stack app. And if I go to items, there should be uh, an example ID and example name, which is a thing that's in my code right now. Exactly, yes. Okay, let's just change that quickly and say hello, and then say world. Save, send deploy. In a second, we should be able to invoke this again. Remote evoke, second, loading resources, invocation results, successful, refresh, refresh, uh, items, hello, and world. Just like that. And just like that, it's easier than ever to develop and build and troubleshoot serverless applications locally uh, using local stack and the AWS toolkit for VS Code. Now, go ahead and install that plugin and play for yourself. I invite you to go ahead and check out the documentation and do tell me down below, what are you gonna build using the AWS toolkit and local stack. I want to see how, how, how many resources locally can you run in that poor, poor Docker container. Now, if only this thing would work with Rust.